Hey guys, welcome back to another podcast. So today we've got uh, four people, in, well, and me as well, so we've got five. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, Captain Cummings. Hey. Uh, Custom Boomster. Hello. MAW001. Howdy. And Sikaku. Hello. So yes, we <coughs> Uh, new new member of the podcast. Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, so we don't really have a topic for this week, um, but we're just going to go for a general chat. As uh, the last week's podcast, uh, <laughs> if that went up, would have been quite quite popular. But uh, yeah, <laughs> stupid recorders. Would have went yeah. viral. We would have been famous by now. <laughs> It was that damn Skype recorder. Not that we have anything against Skype. We love you, Skype. <laughs> <coughs> so, All right. So what did people pick up this week? Or last week? All Avengers stuff, pretty much. There was a lot of Avengers. Two books, mm-hmm. anyways. A lot of books, though. There's tons, uh, tons of image stuff too that came out. Yeah. Did you guys read Massive? Oh, I ordered it. it. Hasn't arrived yet though. That was really good. Yeah, Jake has some muffins. Thank you for introducing me to Walt. The muffins said you're absolutely right. The dark shirt was the way Muffins. <laughs> I think Phil's watching a muffin show. <laughs> He's watching what? A muffin Can you show. Hear the TV show. <laughs> the muffin show that, tonight. I want. I want to get that muffin recipe. <laughs> They're delicious. Yeah. Um. Grim Leaper. Uh. Issue two came oh, out. Yeah. That was. Oh man. What a messed up book that is. Um. <laughs> lots of fun though. Um. Oh, there's nothing like that. what. Nothing like watching people getting their like head knocked off by t- truck tires and just just crazy. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, it is. Uh, what else came out? Epic Kill number two came out. I can't wait to read. Well, if they ever come out with that on trade, I can't. I'm gonna read it then. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> X Astonishing X Men Fifty One came out. Oh yeah, the the uh, invitation issue. Hmm. Did um? Uh, does anybody find it weird that like the Scarlet Witch is like the most powerful mutant in the world now? Am I the only one that thinks that's weird? Or well, she's she's got like. Her power is like really strong. Like she she controls chaos magic, right? So Something she like can that. she can basically do anything as long as it's like whatever she wants. <laughs> yeah, and as and also as long as it, it's potentially like damaging too. So she's almost got she's almost a mega level mutant, really, if you think about it. But I don't know why they don't classify her as one. Well, I remember back in the day, like, she, you know, wiggle a little magic and something little would happen. Now it's like House of M style, you know, she's killing all the mutants or whatever. Well, she's just, growing up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it just bothers me. Where? How did her, did her powers get more powerful or what? I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> Well, as a young girl matures, Phil, she goes through changes, <laughs> and sometimes those changes become quite irrational. And uh, I think that's probably what's become um, her mutant powers now. You know, she's just become this this witch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm gonna get hate mail from women now. I was gonna say I'm not saying a thing. Yeah. Well. Send all your hate mail to maw one <laughs> And I'll pass it back on to Custom Brum Stuff. <laughs> no! <laughs> I'll filter out all the nice ones and I'll just send you the bad ones. Oh, perfect. 
I get enough hate mail as it is. <laughs> yeah, Phil's the residential uh, Santa Claus from hell hate mail letter guy. <laughs> what do you mean there's no Santa Claus? <laughs> Riker, there's really a Santa Claus. <laughs> okay, that's good. There's no Easter Bunny. Oh no. <laughs> we'll have a, an influx of children's mail coming in <laughs> to, to, to the Jay's comic podcast of hatred. <laughs> My six year old daughter. <laughs> Went out and shot somebody yesterday because <laughs> you said there was no tooth fairy. <laughs> By the way, there is a tooth fairy, and his name is Bill. <laughs> he looks great in a tutu. Yes, he does. <laughs> it's that big bag of quarters that always bothers me. <laughs> I was reading a uh, interesting. Uh, article on the internet this morning it was about the um the company spies that were in between marvel and dc and car uh, books that were almost exactly the same you know coming out like months apart like uh the doom patrol and x-men and the thing and man thing stuff like that i see that um Speaking of that, Captain uh, Strangelife is going to do that video about uh, all the similarities between the, the Man Thing and Swamp Thing books. Because I guess there was like a big, huge controversy over those two books coming out at the same time as well. That'll be interesting. <coughs> I saw his video that you put up on um, Comic Book Central. Where he had the two comics and the covers looked near enough exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty that, cool. Yeah. <laughs> He's got so many comics that he must, you know, see so many similarities, you know, when he's going through stuff. But but that one was really that one was really close. I mean the the energy creatures or whatever were like pretty much exactly the same. <laughs> I thought the Even older the space bubble was cooler. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the funniest part, though. The speech bubbles pretty much said the same thing, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. So, um, has anybody seen that DC Comics have put up a. Uh, a Nielsen's rating questionnaire? No. Uh -huh. Yeah, you, you, there's actually a, a questionnaire on the internet. Um, let's see if I can find the link for it, as long as it doesn't drop me out. And you can actually tell them in this Nielsen's questionnaire what you actually think of the new DC 52. Oh my god, send oh. me that link. Send <laughs> me that link. I'm gonna give them one Fantastic. for Fantastic. <laughs> I, I, dropped say, oh, yeah. but, I dropped everything but Batman titles, so that pretty much. <laughs> You've ruined my childhood, you bastards! <laughs> <laughs> Didio! Yeah. Dan to Didio, I want your address right now. <laughs> I hope the comedian assassinates you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he smothers you to death like he did Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> I wish Marvel had a question there. Yeah. Go to town. That, would, <laughs> that would be town fun on too. That one. <clears throat> Give him a nice rant about giving us the option about buying digital comics. Oh, man. No kidding. You know in 20 years, those little sticker things on the back of those comics will probably all rot off and rot holes through the comics and <laughs> yeah. probably turn into cancerous agents and will wake up with third eyes and four testicles and no hair and... Oh. <laughs> Let's 
sipping. I can't even. You can't even give away those codes though. Like I was giving those codes away for a while, and nobody even wants them. Yeah, which is weird because you figure, you know, you figure people, people that don't have money, you know, they would want some free what? comics if they like that stuff. Well, but. yeah, exactly. All the people that <laughs> live under bridges should be just clamoring for that stuff. <laughs> they probably don't have the, the reading devices for it, but you know. <laughs> That's what's funny, though. They give away, you know, they. <laughs> the, the, it's you would think it would be like a cheaper way, you know, these digital comics, but you gotta buy like a five thousand dollar device to read the comics on. <laughs> mm. Plus, as well as I wonder. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was, I was just gonna say. Plus, I wonder if they realize that because they've created the digital comics, they've made it easier for people to pirate them as well. <laughs> exactly. Mm, true. You know, it's like we don't want you to pirate things, but here, have digital comics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we'll exactly. give you the software to pirate them as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. There we go, Napster all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone get a copy of the Massive that was misprinted? Yes, I have one that's sitting at my store for me. <laughs> oh man, I forgot all about that. I guarantee it. Two of the two of the um, the inside pages are like almost black because the inter the inkers uh, messed it up. It's not really worth anything, but it's just cool to have. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> might be someday. That's my next question answered. Is it worth anything? No. Yeah. <laughs> I did get some really cool. When Fear Itself was coming out, they printed the wrong cover on the wrong book. So <laughs> there was Fear Itself, the actual miniseries cover, printed on one of the the side um, stories. And they did like two different ones like that. They switched the, all the books around. So I got some of those, which are cool. Oh, nice. Oh, sweet. You know what comes out next week? Dinosaurs versus Aliens. Oh, oh cool. Who's Real doing good. that? Barry Sonfield and Grant Morrison. Nice. That looks awesome. Oh, yeah. Gotta got love dinosaurs, man. And when they're eating aliens? Mm. <laughs> Ten times better. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone get Mars Attacks? Oh, I wanted to, but they didn't have it. I want that box set with the fifty-something issues in it, oh, but my wife yeah. said no. <laughs> How much is that? Two hundred bucks. Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> She's oh, like, we, well. we, ju we just got a car. I'm like, I know, but please. <laughs> I have a car. <laughs> yeah. Sell the car. Get the box set. What's yeah, that? right. We'll walk to work for the rest of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I've got a box set of Mars Attacks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I never did get it though. I, uh, I, uh, I looked at. They had like a few different covers wow. at uh, the the uh, comic book store, but I never ever did pick it up. I totally forgot. Yeah, my cover was um, number thirty. Like, oh, okay. Uh, a spider eating some woman. <laughs> it was quite funny. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> I don't remember seeing it at my store though, so I don't think. Uh, I didn't get it. Was it I should good? have one waiting for me. Was it good? I haven't read it yet. I only got it yesterday, oh. but I've uh, yeah been too busy to read anything yet. But I will do tomorrow. Yes, yes. Oh, there's a link, by the way, to the cover if anyone wants to. Ah uh, yes, I would like to see a spider eating a woman. 
<laughs> I thought it. I thought it was eating it, eating it, but it's just like pinned around. Skip, skip, so. ready to eat her. I think yeah. it's like in pre-eating uh, stage. He kind of looks like he's got buck teeth, doesn't he? <laughs> spider. I've never seen a spider with buck teeth, but that, that, it. I don't know. Like it, it's scary looking, but it's scarier because he's got buck teeth. Man, it's a good thing spiders don't really look like that. She doesn't look all that scared either, really. I mean, come on. I would have peed myself or something. Like, she's just kind of like, oh no, a spider with buck teeth. Oh no. <laughs> Not <It's> bad. Like, <laughs> yeah, anything but the buck tooth spider. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I'm going to bite you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to see all the other covers. <laughs> Everybody's got buck teeth on these covers. I never noticed before. <laughs> Except the rabbit. The, the rabbit doesn't. <laughs> I think they've got a copy a picture of each of the covers in the back three pages of the comic. Oh, oh nice. nice. So you'll be able to see all the covers. There's about 56, 57 copies. I'm getting that box set. That's all there is to it now. I'm saving. <laughs> I got to have all those. I have to have it. You can walk to work holding the box set up in up in the air and everyone will know what awful yeah. decision you made. Yeah, exactly. Take my shirt off. <laughs> People will be like envious all over the world except in China because they don't care over there, but... Well, they might actually. Yeah, they might. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he got Mars attacks. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks so manly with no shirt. Of course, that was British. So I don't know what. I can't do a good Chinese accent. <laughs> he looks so good with no shirt. There. Here come more hate you, males. Ah, they're piling up. <laughs> YouTube's gonna shut us down for you know it, and you don't really. <laughs> it's Phil's. It's Phil's fault, really, ultimately. So. Yeah, I'm glad <laughs> he's not here. He was the first to offend anybody. <laughs> our podcast, our comic talk, makes people in their YouTube experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said I was sorry for that incident, though. Yeah, that's true. That's fair enough. You did say that. Yep. But I think what made it worse was we made fun of all those people on the next podcast, and that probably didn't go over good. <laughs> yeah. But it was really fun, though. <laughs> So you have fun, that's the main point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> ah, thank you. Sweet. So, anything else that's interesting been happening in comics? Uh, the Avengers vs. X-Men, as much as we trashed that book, um, the new one was really, really good. Um... Yeah. Which I was a little disappointed because I was really looking forward to making fun of it, but uh, it wasn't. It was actually really good. So now it's kind of renewed my interest in um, trying to figure out what is going to happen at the end of this series because uh, you know the X Men that have the the Phoenix power now have totally mm. changed the Earth. There's no war. There's no missiles. There's none of this kind of stuff, um, and they did it pretty good. Like it, it's it's not something that felt forced. A little bit of time has passed from the last issue to this issue, so it's um, yeah, it's it's really interesting to see what they're going to do. I mean, it's kind of neat because they still retain a little bit of who they are. I mean, you know, Cyclops is still a bit of a prick, and uh, Emma is still you know she's still a witch, but um, everybody else is you know. 
still you don't see much about <clears throat> Namor or anything like that, but I'm I'm sure he's you know still Charlie King of the Sea. So um, he's standing in a pose with his hands on his hips somewhere. Imperious Rex, yes, in a puddle. <laughs> yes, yes. It reminds me of Namor <laughs> from uh, that '70s show where he just stands with his hands on his hips and says, "Yes, yes." <laughs> That tuna, tuna but you notice that issue five was so bad and it was written by a certain writer and in this one was written by you know hickman and it was actually good yeah right i won't name the writer again though mention the writer's name again <laughs> so is anybody is anybody reading uh the rebel blood that's a cool name it's a, uh, it's a zombie comic, but the zombies are animals. <laughs> so, if if you can imagine like a deer coming trolloping out of the forest, and it's all rotted and it's trying to eat you, you know, and rats and dogs and raccoons and stuff, um, and they got big like tumors hanging off them and stuff. It's it's a pretty disturbing comic book actually. Do they have pretty, buck teeth? Uh no, no. Ah. Most of them don't, which was a little Can't disappointing. Be that scary. Yeah, well, I guess yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds pretty cool, though. Yeah, it's okay. The, a lot of people don't like the art, and it's not the best art, but it kind of lends to the story. It's not too bad. It's it's dark. It's ominous. You know, it's kind yeah. of a an ominous kind of a thing. So. Huh. I thought I think I read the first issue of it, but I don't think I've seen the second one yet. Mm. Yeah. Is it a bit like um, a bit like what's happening in Animal Man at the moment with the rock? I'm not. I'm not reading that, so I don't know. Oh, right, okay. I Does should read that. Similar? I keep telling people I'm going to pick that up, and I just never do. Yeah. Uh, the Before Watchmen, the comedian, that was uh, an amazing book. Uh, we talked a bit about that last night on the other podcast, and and I can't believe that there hasn't been any flack over that book, just because there's quite some controversial stuff in that. I mean, the Kennedys, Jackie Onassis, Marilyn Monroe, are all in it, but the Kennedys and Onassis are really depicted as, like, I say this with a smile on my face bad people <laughs> but um, just I'm just kind of shocked that nobody's like wrote in and said like oh how dare you you know depict these people like this they were they were incredible Americans or whatever you know um, well that's so, funny you can make fun of like national heroes and like celebrities and stuff right but but if some gay people get married in a comic book the end of the world is coming yeah yeah. <laughs> hey, can I talk? Can I talk about that for like a second? And I, I'm just curious as to to something about that. Why is it? And I'm not picking on anybody. Don't get me wrong. I have friends that are gay. Um, but why is it? Or maybe I'm not seeing it. Is it me, or has everybody in the the Marvel universe or the DC universe have they accepted that as? Like, don't you think that there would be somebody who would be like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm pissed about that. Or I don't think, you know, that's right or something. And then they go and punch somebody. You know what I mean? It would probably yeah. be Wolverine. I mean, he's like one of the older. <laughs> oh, no, but that's the thing. Like, I, I find it really strange that with, like, you put, like, religion in a comic. You got people. Everybody's freaking out. You've got... um you know stuff about, like politics and comics and everybody's got a side but you can't have anything about homosexuality or lesbianism everybody's got to be on the same page and now I don't know if that's true or not but it seems like it, it's that way in the books does it, does it seem like that I know a few years ago in the when Carl Rayner was the main Green Lantern in the title right they actually had uh, an issue where there was a, a uh, I suppose you call it gay bashing, where two homosexual men got beaten up because of their sexuality. 
Oh, I really? If it was, uh, yeah, I can't remember if it was one of Carl Rayner's friends or whether it was, you know, some, so, somebody that knew somebody that was homosexual. But there was actually a, a whole story about. Oh, okay, good, yeah. good. Because I, I, I wonder about that because I haven't seen anything, you know. And I mean, comics being what they are, you know, people like to push the envelope with, you know, doing whatever they want to do. So. You know, you have drugs in there, and and everybody's like, "Oh, it's just drugs; it's not a big deal." Or you have somebody murdering a kid, and it's like, "Oh, it's you know, it's not a big deal." But then sometimes you'll <laughs> have issues in there, and the issue will be like, it just seems like everybody in that comic book universe is on the same side as that issue, and it seems very skewered to me sometimes. <laughs> but, yeah, like somebody like Captain America. From you know, he was born in the 1940s. You think he's like up on the gay issue and for their rights or something? I kind of doubt it. <laughs> I'm just saying, he was from World War II. He's probably close yeah. to the issue. Yeah, you would think that. You would think that he probably would be, given you know where what he what era he was from. But I mean, even him, like I don't think he is. I'm sure that they would just make him okay with it. You know, which I mean, the kind of part of that really bothers me because it's like, you know, you have so many people vying for, you know, rights and everything else. And it's like, I just get pissed off when people say, you know, oh, well, you know, everything's got to be okay. Everything's got to be okay. And it's like, well, then that's not reality, man. You don't want religion in there because it's going to offend somebody. Then, you know, don't put religion in. Don't put politics in. Don't put lifestyle choices in. Don't put nothing in then, you know. If you're going to whine about it, just, you know, shut your damn mouth. But uh, that's not the way it is. So, there, that's my rant. <laughs> Today what today? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Is it? Is it what? It is. Oh, I didn't know that. Huh. Well, there you go. I stuck my foot in my mouth yet again. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? It's Gay Pride Day today. Oh, it is. Is it? Yeah, I don't know. That figures. I hope I don't get no hate mail now. You, uh, that's just kind of funny. Uh, I really won't. Did. <laughs> but I remember, like, when okay, well, perfect example when Watchmen came out. Um, I don't remember any controversy over that book whatsoever on, on any level, you know. Uh, there was some nudity in it, there was some lesbianism in it, there was some, you know, the political aspect of it, especially at that time, like in the mid nine or the mid eighties. And I didn't hear like anything about that book until the late nineties, people started to like hail that book as a, a masterpiece. And then they started picking it apart. And I thought, give me a break, man. Like why, why are you picking it apart now? You know, like, like ten years old. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was gonna say, I found out which issue of Green Lantern it was that had the the story in it. It's from the nineteen ninety series. Oh, it's okay. Issue issue one five four. All right, I'm gonna check that out. Yeah. Because it seems to me that it d they didn't have a lot of... I mean, North Star was the first gay superhero back in Alpha Flight. And, you know, there wasn't a lot of... I remember reading that when it came out. And there wasn't a, it wasn't not like a big deal or anything like that. And it seems like now... I don't know if it's just me, but does it... Does, like, does that issue seem like it's like a really big deal now in comics because it does to me hello is this on yeah we can hear you <laughs> does it am, is, am i wrong like does it seem to be like really a big deal now I'm oh you're everybody's personally. scared <laughs> i mean personally it's not a big deal to me if they have characters who are 
homosexual, bisexual, straight in a comic book. It's not necessarily. It's well, it's like real life. It's not necessarily the person's orientation. It, right. Sexual orientation. It's the person themselves. You know. Yeah. Um, I just think the people that get het up over things like that are just very shallow, petty-minded people. Really. You know what I mean. Yeah. But do you I guess my question is this. Why why does it seem now that it's so important now to be bringing out everybody, you know, now? Why 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 does it seem that now is the time when you have to start making this guy gay or this woman lesbian or whatever? Why do you think it's now? Why wasn't why wasn't it like that 5 years ago or 10 years ago? Always, I mean, I guess yeah. It just jumped in the comic books now. Um, I live in a town where it's constant, you know, talking about bashing gays because I live in the uh, a certain uh, church that likes to uh, hold signs. <laughs> oh, and, oh, right, it, yeah. And picket uh, funerals and stuff. So it's like always in your face about, yeah. <laughs> Is it the Whisperer Baptist Church? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I had a I had a conversation with somebody who was um, defending that church, and you know, being somebody who, I mean, I did the Bible college, and I did the you know, I was a pastor for ten years, and I did all that, and I had such a hard time trying to understand why somebody was defending these people because every single thing that they are proclaiming in their placards and everything is is anti Christ it's just it made it made no sense to me you know like to to have somebody trying to to defend a church that was saying you know um, anybody in the army, you know, we hope that they die and burn in hell or, you know, <laughs> kill, you know, gays, gay people should be killed or, you know, this and that. And I thought, you know, it, not only does it not make sense, it's not even scriptural. Like, and and that's the thing that just blows my mind with a lot of the, the churches that um, love to attack that kind of stuff because 99.9% .9 of them don't even know what what they're what they're trying to you know trying to proclaim to other people because they don't even understand what scripture is but I just find it amazing yeah a lot of the stuff the scriptures that they write on their signs are from like verses from like Leviticus and stuff like that it's like that's like Jewish law, you know, that's not really what Jesus was talking about, you know, love and all this sort of stuff. Well, you I know, mean, if somebody if somebody wants to live a specific lifestyle, um, I'm I'm not supposed to judge their lifestyle. That well, that's, exactly. just, that's just what it says, you know. If somebody wants to live beside me and they want to like cut kids up or something with a chainsaw, there's a pretty good chance that I might want to do something about that. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, actually, but, I heard it. yeah, but you know, like it's just, it just amazes me how comics have gotten into this, um, arena where they're trying to, for lack of a better word, pit people against each other, because you know what? It's it's just a big entertainment business, you know. It's like a movie. You watch a movie, and it, it probably has something in it at some point that might offend you. And comics are the same way. I mean, there's some like the new saga. It had like um, a lot of sexual content in it, and you know, some of it was kind of funny, but some of it was, you know, I found not up my up my creek, you know, but. I'm not going to tear the book up and throw it out or anything, but at the same time, you know, I can see somebody else not liking that book because of that. 
and it and it pits people against each other. I find sometimes, and it, it just makes me mad. You know, sometimes I wish that they would keep certain things out of stuff, not in a censorship way, but in a way that would maybe you know, in a tasteful way, way. promote promote, promote non douchiness. <laughs> Yeah. I just, uh, these people, they get all uptight about some of these issues or whatever. One of them was like, you know, our kids might read these books. And it's like, well, you know, what age are these kids? They have age-appropriate books, you know. Um, yeah. Like, you know, I was buying the uh, Spider-Man Marvel Avengers, or Adventures for... Uh, Dr. Rockstar, it's age appropriate. I wouldn't let him read X Men even if it didn't have gay people in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? The, the saying is true, you know, if you don't want your kids to to do something, then you know, if you if you're a parent and the kid lives in your house and you do what you have to do in your house, I mean Everybody was a kid, so if I went over to my other friend's house, who parents didn't give a rip what they did, then I was doing what they were doing too. You know, like yeah. I never watched pornography at home, but you can bet your ass I watched it over at my friend's house. You know, um, but you know, if my if my mom didn't want me to read something, then she'd say you're not reading it, and you know, it's cool. What am I gonna do? You know, I would try to sneak it in, obviously, but I mean, she usually catch me and smack me in the head so <laughs> <laughs> it's like no matter what you do anywhere in the world in the comic book there's always somebody who would disagree with something for sure yeah. and I guess that's what makes it maybe that's what makes it even more popular is that there are you know something for everybody out there you know, comic book wise, um, I guess when people really get bent out of shape is when real life creeps in, and comics tend to take on a little too much of uh, I don't want to say reality, but a little too much politics. For me, it always comes down to the politics of it. I I don't for a minute, and I might be totally wrong and, and I hope I don't offend anybody by saying this but I I hate when they put stuff in comic books for the value of, of shock or for the value of we're so, trying to yeah we're trying to proselytize something we're trying to you know you guys don't like it when the Jehovah Witnesses come to the door and bug you in the morning because I know I sure as hell don't and I don't want it in my <laughs> comics either and you know sometimes it seems like that's what that is and it just bugs me well, it's almost a slap in the face to that, you know, whatever they're trying to promote or, you know, to sell the book to that issue or whatever, you know. At this point, it would almost be like a slap in the face to gay people, you know. We're going to put gay people in the book, but all we're doing it for is to sell the book. Yeah, and then you have half of the people who are in that lifestyle are going to be like, right on, that's awesome. We're, we're, it's, it's showing something good. But then you got the other side, they're going to say, you know, we're upset about that because you're using us as an example or you're using us in a way that's not, you know, it, we shouldn't be used that way. So I can understand how they could see both sides and be really upset about it too. But I don't know. <laughs> like, who was the first black um, superhero? I'm not real sure. Samuel L. Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> was it Black Panther? I don't... That's what I'm wondering, if it was Black Panther. Because I know Black Lightning came out in the 1970s. Yeah. So Black I'm Panther was think. the 60s. Um, was... Uh, amazing Man. He He didn't actually come out in any time near. He was just a character that was brought out in the All-Star Squadron, wasn't he? Oh, okay. Because I don't think would, I made... Because I, I know he was black, but I think he was in the All Star Squadron comic, not actually okay, published. Okay, yeah. or, it would be really interesting to find yeah, out black. when when that character came out, what kind of... if there was any controversy in comics at that time. It would be really interesting 
because you know that that's a really big deal too. I'm sure that was a huge deal at the time. I'm yeah. Sure. Oh yes. You don't hear much about it though. No, you don't, and that's the thing. Like, I mean, you got to remember the 60s, okay? Let's say that it was Black Panther, just for the sake of argument. So you're talking about the 60s. What was going on with black um, actors in movies during the 60s? Mm. Not even, it's not even in the same category. Like, they, they would be catapulted in, in comics to the status of hero. But in movies, they were still, you know... Well, I don't know. I think in the '60s it was changing because there was a lot of, there was a lot of, um, you know, the, the free lo- or the, the the freedom movement and stuff in the '60s too. So I, I'm pretty sure that was changing. But you know, in the '40s and '50s, um, mostly or predominantly, I think a lot of blacks were in a lot of musicals, and they were in tons of, uh, you know, that that kind of picture show I guess and they were accepted because the musicians you know everybody seemed to have everybody seemed to have tons and tons of um, black people in bands and stuff and it was like you know it's cool it's all good and it was totally accepted but they wouldn't let them drink at the same fountain or something and it's like what the hell just crazy (laughs) Yeah. Look at the controversy that they had on Star Trek. Oh yeah, With that's perfect. The and Captain Kirk. Yeah. Oh, Captain Kirk. The, yeah. The first interracial kiss on TV. Right. Didn't they have to change Black Panther's name for a while because of the Black Panther Party or something like? Oh, they didn't have to, know. but didn't they? I'm not sure. Does anybody know? Don't know. Geez, think, Jay, here we here we thought this podcast was just going to be all goofy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the serious one. Yeah, good <laughs> lord, what happened? <laughs> I don't know. I can't find. Oh, here it is. Yeah, nineteen sixty-six. Oh, Black Panther. It just says it predates that or something like that. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I thought I read that somewhere, but I'm on Wikipedia and I don't see anything about it, so maybe it didn't happen. I just searched on Wikipedia. It says 1966 first black uh, black superhero, Black Panther. Okay. But then it says the first African American superhero is the Falcon in 1969. Oh wow. Oh okay. Okay. And both those characters to this day still are like two of the premier, you know, um, African American heroes. Like when I when I think of, you know, I think of Luke Cage personally. Yeah, Luke Cage and also Giant Man, but he's dead now. But you know, I think of him too. <laughs> but Luke Cage, heck, he's the he's the leader of the New Avengers. Yeah. 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 So Does anybody, anybody kind of. Sorry. Sorry. No, I was, I was just going to say, have you ever heard this, the story of uh, the problem William Gaines had with publishing Judgment Day? No. The story, there was um, EC, the EC Comics. Right. And it was just when they brought out the Comic Code Authority. Mm-hmm. And William Gaines, Gaines wanted to publish a story called Judgment Day. And it was about a space band, and all through the story you saw him with his helmet on. And when he took his helmet off, it turned out to be an African American under oh, the helmet, and you didn't nice. know anything about it until the last, very last panel. And the CCA said, "No, you can't publish it." And he was like, oh, "Why can't I publish it?" And they gone for, they went for all these reasons why he couldn't publish it. Um, the person had perspiration on his forehead, and all these stupid reasons why he couldn't publish it. And right. it turned out it was because. It was a black man at the end of the story. Wow, that's it. That just and amazes me. <laughs> you know, my my yeah. wife and I like because my wife is really into old movies and stuff. Um, we've seen 
so many changes in the ways that they make movies, especially with like different um, ethnicities all through the years. And her and I have argued so much over just the fact that, you know, she said, well, the reason that they, they were like that was because, uh, you know, how they were brought up and all this kind of stuff and, and everything that was going on at the time. And I just, and I understand that. Like, in my mind, I understand that. Like, if you're raised a certain way from the time you're small, then, of course, you are going to um, react the way that you're raised. That's why people who are in cults and stuff like that, they don't know that they're in a cult until mm-hmm. they get to a place where they, you know, can start to understand or somebody intervenes or whatever have you. Until they drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't drink the Kool-Aid, you know. <laughs> But, you know, well, I, I always thought it was funny back in the day when, like, you'd be watching a movie and there'd be, like, a Native American, and it would be a white person with makeup on. You're like, that's clearly, <laughs> yeah. not, that's clearly not a Native American there. <laughs> or the cowboy in Indian movies where it's it's uh, nobody's Native. It's just white guys with, like, long ponytail wigs on. Fifth is in the head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and really bad sunburn. Yeah, exactly. That guy looks like he's Swedish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it just always amazes me that, you know, when it comes to entertainment, whether it's or comics or whatever, that they treat, and what I mean by they is the creators, the creators treat us like we're idiots and I think that really bothers me because you know we're basically paying for everything that these people have you know they wouldn't have the mansions and stuff if we weren't buying the comics and sometimes it, if you guys know what I mean sometimes it just enrages me that they they feed us stuff and you know because we're collectors we buy it when we should just well i'm just not gonna buy it no more but we're like no i gotta have my spider-man man so <laughs> well they know that's what we're like <laughs> i know and that's what makes me mad <laughs> it's like it's damn like, it it's like the before watchman they know that people are going to buy it regardless of whether they agree yeah. with it or not they're going to buy yeah. it yeah yeah exactly we need to stand up as one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we shouldn't fear the government. They should be fearing us. Yeah. <laughs> now, where's my match? <laughs> <laughs> don't, I want to come to America one day. I don't want to be strip searched or anything like that. We've just been like landing. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you know, it's pretty, it's pretty sad when... I mean, if I want to go over to the States now, um, I have to have a passport, which is fine. I have a problem with that because I don't want to get stuck somewhere, you know, and not be able to get home or anything. But um, I'm so scared of what may happen if, you know, they deem it, you know, necessary to detain me or whatever they want to do that I have, like, no desire to travel really because mm. that kind of stuff scares me to death yeah I'm just not somebody who likes you know to be anally probed so <laughs> call me call, call, uh, call me old fashioned but I just I don't like it. you sure <laughs> yeah I am <laughs> you don't know you've not tried it yet I have I think <laughs> <You have. laughs> No, I, I, it wasn't uh, your cup of tea. I came awful close once when we went to Tennessee years and years and years ago when I was in my teens and the guy I was going with was taking drugs across and I thought for sure we were going to have every hole in our body had a stick in it or something and they stopped us and they tore the, we were in a VW uh, bug and they tore the car apart literally like the seats and everything they took the seats out and stuff and then they just left it we had to they didn't put it back together or anything we had to jam the seats back in and put all of our stuff back in turn around and go home i was scared to death it was horrible jeez Uh, i've seen in the 
Sorry, Scott. No, I was done. Oh, right. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I, was, I know, I think it's last year, there was a couple of people from the UK that made some stupid comments on Facebook about just before going to America. And when they landed yeah. in America, they actually got arrested. They got taken to one side. They got strip searched. They had, and it was. They said it was almost as if they they were actual terrorists. And then mm. they just got told to turn straight back and go home because they weren't welcome in the. All because they made a couple of stupid comments on Facebook about, yeah. you know, what they they would never do. But, you know, it's one of those stupid little things that you, you know, you do without thinking, sort of thing. Yeah. You say without thinking. And it just seems absolutely crazy to me that there's so much paranoia. Yeah. For that sort of thing. Well, in, there, in was this, a, there was a person here that said something about uh, our beloved uh, governor, Mr. Sam Brownback. And uh, I'll probably get a letter from him now, but just for mentioning it. Uh, but um, somebody said that they hated him or something stupid like that on Twitter and he uh, tried to make the principal of her high school make her apologize. She had the principal like try to get him in trouble. <laughs> and they're like, then, then uh, he was informed, you know, that you have the uh, freedom of speech here in America and Sam Brownback kind of backed off. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Well, if that was the case, we'd be in a lot of trouble from our last podcast that Jay, me, and Howler Mouse did because I think we talked about everything from the Queen's toilet paper to, uh, <laughs> good Lord, everything. But, man. And, you know, now while we're on the subject of all this controversial stuff, too, I'll just let me throw in another branding iron. Um, is you guys know because you live in the UK is it against the law to speak against the Muslim religion in the UK like if I was on the street and I said that the Muslim religion was you know bad or whatever is that against the law I don't think so don't think it's against the law no because we do have a sort of freedom of speech in this country as well well the okay, papers do I was led. I was led to believe that you can't actually speak against that religion in the UK because the government had deemed it that it was actually punishable by jail. That you could be arrested for that. Um, I know they've got they've got a law that says that you're not allowed to say things that could be construed as inflammatory against. Yeah, somebody else's religious beliefs in that, but mm -hmm. then to say that there's plenty of you know um, I don't really want to say they're Muslim clerics because what they actually say isn't anything to do with the Islamic faith. It's you know as far as as far from the Islamic faith as the Westboro Baptist churches from Christianity. Right, <laughs> right. But yeah. um, you have these Muslim these so-called Muslim clerics who actually stand in the in places and, and preach hate against non-Muslims. Right. But then they get away with it. Right. So... And see, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. It, that just... It amazes me. It That... I'll never... It will never cease to amaze me that these things happen and they... Not only do they happen, but there are laws that protect that kind of thing it, it just like something's terribly wrong you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's a it's a crazy mixed up world we live in it is i feel so bad i feel like i i, I steered this whole podcast so into the friggin into like i don't know oh well. Yeah, I'm not going to say nothing else. <laughs> and the letters go to Costa Bromstar, care of YouTube, <laughs> California. Postal Cal code M A W O O one. Oh. 
Uh, well, yeah, the, the, I guess the thing is, all those, all the things that we did talk about, though, are they are valid, you know, and it's it's hard to understand why some of that stuff happens, especially when it gets into our comics, because <laughs> that's so important. <laughs> You know, that would but, be awesome if somebody made a Westboro Baptist Church comic book, though. <laughs> Especially if it had a little perforation so that you could use it for other things. <laughs> if they called it, like, the, the, the Adventures of the Westboro Baptist Church or something, and they just... The American Legion blocks them from going to the funeral. <laughs> so they sue <laughs> I know Kevin Smith made a movie based on him. Oh, he the, the Red State movie. Yeah, he um, and he got completely berated by him. <laughs> I never even heard of that there? movie. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. I think it's called Red State. Oh. Well, you know, he was brought up Catholic, and uh, he talks about you know Catholicism. You know, in in all the things that he found, you know, like really horrendous within, you know, the Catholic faith, and I thought, you know, his parents must just like almost die every time they hear him talk about that stuff. But yeah, he's like, oh, whatever, man. <laughs> I think he's a whole right guy, but he's I don't like his movies that much. <laughs> I'm not a fan of him, but I, I don't mind, uh, like, his work in comics and stuff. I kind of like when he when he follows through with it, when he finishes it. Yeah. <laughs> He's a pretty, pretty good writer. I'm still waiting for Bullseye Daredevil number two to come out. No kidding! Keep <laughs> switching that one. Oh, that first issue is brilliant, man. I know. It's like, how the hell hard is it just to finish that? Come on! <laughs> Maybe they could get somebody else to finish it. Yeah, like me, uh, I could do it. Yeah. <laughs> or Matt Fraction. <laughs> <laughs> he can make anything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he would man. just write a Thor story. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a comic book origami master. <laughs> I can fold it in any shape. As long as it's shaped, looks like a turd. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not a turd. It's a swan. No, it looks like a turd. No, it's a swan. <laughs> it's a flying crane. <laughs> you want me to work on Avengers versus X Men? Here you go. <laughs> the Fantastic Five. Oh. There you go. <laughs> well, I thought you were talking about the real Fantastic Five. That those books were oh. Remember those books? They were bad. It was a mini series. <clears throat> Did anybody see that video, uh, the Captain Strange Life uh, contest? Yeah. What's going? On? That Ronald Reagan comic book with him with a machine gun. <laughs> Ronald Drake or Reagan's Raiders. <laughs> oh my god, that looks awesome. I hope I win. <laughs> that was a pretty sweet cover. <laughs> I was actually on board the uh, station on the Ronald Reagan ship. Oh, really? They had this big, like, uh, as soon as you walked on, it's like big, uh, it's either. I'm assuming it was brass statue of him waving at you. It always kind of creeped me out. <laughs> <laughs> he should have had like a big brass monkey beside him too, like the bozo. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Remember in the '80s when uh, he allegedly almost pushed the bomb button when he woke up? He was dreaming her. He was, I forget what the story was, but he rolled over and he almost hit the button or something. And I remember how <laughs> how funny that they satirized that on everything. Every time that Reagan was on TV, they would have him doing something where he's pushing the button. And <laughs> oh, I thought it was the, I thought it was to call the maid. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna go and get a cup of coffee. 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh man. <laughs> and um, you know, the uh, Splitting Image from the UK that did all the puppet stuff. Yeah. I had no idea. I got so excited. I did not know that Chris Berry from Red Dwarf did most of the voices for that show. Yeah, he did quite a few of them. That was awesome. I had no idea. Yeah. yeah. Yet another reason that it's so much cooler to be in the UK. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah. We're going to, including the temperature at the moment as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, I think yeah, what is, is, I what, is it, what is the temperature there? Uh, I'm not too sure. It's quite a warm day today, actually. Yeah, it's got nicer in the evening. Yeah. What's um, a warm day in, uh, in uh, Great Britain? It's 23 so, here. What was that, Phil? What's a warm day in Great Britain? Because... Uh, a warm day here right now, it's 102. Oh my god, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd be uh, dead. I'd be on the ground dead with butter sweating out of my armpits. Uh, a warm day in Great Britain is about 5 degrees and raining. <laughs> <laughs> you, the humidity is uh, 29% here right now. Oh my god, uh -huh. man. <laughs> Wow. I, mean, I know a few a few years ago it did the temperature did get up to about 28, 29, 30 degrees, which is close to 100 degrees oh, Fahrenheit, man. but it did it doesn't usually get that that hot here. It's only so like in midsummer sort of time that it gets really that hot. Yeah. Wow. What's so, funny in the winter time it can get down to like Zero degrees sometimes. Yeah. So in Kansas, you get the coldest and the hottest. <laughs> and it's nice we, for like a month. <laughs> we, uh, we went to Atlanta one year. We, we were doing some, some stuff down there with like homeless people and stuff. And uh, it, was, it was so hot, man. I, I almost cried every day. I, I I believe you. I I look like one of them little fat kids who had been playing in the dirt, and he had those like little sweat streaks down his eyes from like crying. It, it was horrible. Oh my god! It was I just and miserable. I didn't care about the homeless people. I was just so hot. I know you don't have nowhere to. And they're like, "Come on, we got to get them on the bus." I'm like, "I don't care if they get on the bus and eat, man. I, I don't. I'm so hot. I'm gonna puke." <laughs> you could have used them to cool you down. Yeah. No, no, man. No, no. <laughs> no. They smelled really bad. Oh, well, it was, not, it was probably putting a homeless person on me. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, man. Crazy. And we're, there was one dude who. Uh, we were in like this, I don't know, they said it was like the second most dangerous place in the States. And like it was, there was people like shooting at pigeons and stuff like right, right where we were. And like just, just crazy stuff, burned out cars. All the hookers was like locking their children in the houses with these gates and stuff in the mornings. Like it was, I never seen anything like that. But um, this one dude, they said, "Don't whatever you do, don't don't talk to this guy because you know there's something wrong with him." And I'm thinking to myself, "There's something wrong with like 90% of these guys." But um, <laughs> he looked like the only way I could describe it was it looked like he had hamsters running around in his head. Like he just he was so vacant, but there was just like his eyes were like bouncing back and forth like side to side like he was ready to explode or something and didn't I you know didn't I bump into him you know by mistake and he turned around and looked at me and I'm like you want a corn dog <laughs> you know, like, oh man it was crazy he didn't he didn't hurt me or nothing but uh, I took off 
<laughs> so he didn't touch you and in- No, no appro- inappropriate ways, you know. <laughs> Especially after I ordered Offered him a corn dog, like jeez. <laughs> did he take your corn dog? <laughs> no, I don't think he did actually. So. Oh. <laughs> Which was fine because I was starving. <laughs> oh, <of> <laughs> you were starving. I was starving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't give the homeless guy my food because I was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fight you for that corn dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Crazy times. <laughs> so to recap, um, <laughs> we talked about um, what did we talk about? How um, how different ethnicities and and lifestyle and um, and what else? Sexual craziness and saga <laughs> political stuff oh my goodness <laughs> so I told you I come back and it just goes all downhill yeah no kidding man <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to have a serious one every once in a while that's what I say between letters start coming up. yeah Is anybody still there? Yeah, I'm still here. No, I can't hear anything. I thought I heard Scott fade off, and then I didn't hear anything for a second, so I didn't know if like what happened. Faded into the distance. Yeah. It's, 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 it's called a quiet moment of contemplation. Yeah. What, what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> oh, how what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> So are there any issues of comics that you're really trying to get hold of, anyone? Anything you're trying to find? Well, I'm looking at a um, two issues right now on eBay. One is uh, the first appearance of Miss Marvel, which is uh, Marvel Super Heroes number 13. And uh, Strange Tales number 89, which is the first Fing Fang Foom. <laughs> oh, That's cool. fun to say. Fing Fang Foom. Which I don't think I'm gonna win the Fang Fang Fu one, but I only need about forty issues of Amazing Spider-Man now, so I'm looking forward to getting those at some point. Wow! Sweet. Yeah. Well, that is really good. I got I I um, I got twelve. How many? Hundred and what? Seventy. Well, that's not bad, man. Well, I've been only buying them too for like a year or so. It's pretty good. I'm getting there. Yeah. I, know I bought two. Sorry, Scott Carroll. I was going to say, I bought, I bought 12 old Amazing Spider-Man on the weekend, and that knocked it down to about 40 or 41 more issues. So I'm getting there. It's, it, it's going to be hard to get those first you know, 10 issues, but other than that, it should be okay. That's what I like about the Avengers, because it's only, um, like, you know, the first five that are really super expensive. (laughs) The rest of them, you can just get any old hell. (laughs) No, I don't know about that, but I've seen them, I've seen them jump up ever since that movie came out, they're like 20%. Yeah. Yeah. I think the only point... What about you, um, Mark? Do you, what are you trying to get still? <laughs> um, well, one of them's Howler Mouse's fault. He's done a <laughs> video um, about the question number 17. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with the, the little Watchman segment in it and that. Yeah. Mm. So I'm, I'm looking at, I've got a, a, I've got that on eBay at the moment. I'm looking to see about picking that one up. Um, the only other one I think of. I can think of off the top of my head, other than you know, Action Comics number one and Detective Comics twenty seven and <laughs> Amazing Spider Man number one and all those ones. Um, has anybody seen the creator owned heroes from Image? No. Oh. No. 
there's a it's like a, it's it's got two stories in it. It's called Creator Owned Heroes, and I'm looking to get the photo cover variant of it. Oh, nice. Yeah, there's um you know the, the uh, cosplay. Right. They've got, they've actually got a well-known cosplayer who dressed up as one of the characters in the comic, and it's oh, a, that's cool. a, a photo of her in that dressed up like that. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that's that's probably the the two I could realistically get. At the moment. <laughs> Mark, what's the uh, what is the story behind that question book with the the Watchmen? The what what did I can't remember how that went. What was the story behind that? Um, I what the actual story inside the comic? Yeah, like how does it how does it reference Watchmen? I I believe that. Um, Vic Savage is just, he's on a plane and he's reading an issue of Watchmen. Oh, okay. And I, then can't, he I couldn't remember. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think I've seen a few a few pages of it in that. And then he decides he's going to Im, um, imitate Rorschach's way of dealing with people. Oh, okay. <laughs> with hilarious results. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be like the worst, worst. <laughs> way to imitate somebody oh I'm going to be like this guy <laughs> yeah. uh, what are you going to do with that meat cleaver <laughs> you'll see yeah <laughs> every time I hear, hear hear that name though it just reminds me of the videos with him and uh, Deadpool oh I know those are so <laughs> friggin hilarious have you guys seen those no. huh? oh my god Deadpool. send them the link to that Phil because those are like not only are they done well, they are friggin' hilarious. It's just got, they're just toys. The guy's got a Rorschach toy and a Deadpool toy. And he just creates these stories with, with the two of them. And they're so friggin' funny. Deadpool, or uh, Rorschach just keeps friggin' shooting Deadpool in the head like every time. And he keeps getting back up. He can't kill me. <laughs> Did anybody, uh, that reminds me of, uh, did anybody read the uh, Deadpool issues where he broke out of the mental hospital and he had a um, great Britain that he meets the Queen? <laughs> no. Oh, man. It was so funny. <laughs> he, like, breaks into a limo and it happens to have the Queen in there and he's they all think he's got a hostage. <laughs> oh my god, that sounds hilarious. Deadpool and the Queen, that's classic. <laughs> that's better than that's better than Mr. Bean and the Queen. <laughs> I love that Mr. Bean episode where he friggin' has the Queen in it. He bows down to, to curtsy to her and he freaking like headbutts her. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I laughed like an idiot when that happened. Uh, <laughs> he's like right in the head. Uh, that is a good one. <laughs> That's a very good one. Everybody's just quiet, like, I'm not gonna. I remember. <laughs> <it's>, oh. <laughs> Oh, that's uh, that's a cool uh, creator-owned book there. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Now, <laughs> started dancing for a minute there. It's like, yeah, man. When did we get <laughs> raided by Starsky and Hutch? <laughs> to the straight mobile. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now that I'm looking at that cover, I do remember that, Mark. There was there not a couple of different covers for this? I think so, yeah. I think there's a couple of different ones with the the cosplay player too, like Oh, right. I think I remember a couple of them. Oh, cool. I'll have to keep an eye out for them, but that seems to be the better one. For some So reason. this issue this issue's already out then, right? Yeah, it came out Come out beginning of this month, I think it was, or end of last month. Wow, I don't think we got it because I don't remember seeing it. Uh, hmm. 
It's it's not too bad. It's just it's quite a good. It's got um. It's, well, there's a story in there written by Steve Niles. Right. And um. Neil Gaiman. Also, yeah. Yeah. There's wow. an interview with Neil Gaiman in there as well. That's another guy that can just do no wrong. He's everything he does is so good. Yeah. Did you see him on The Simpsons? No, I didn't. They actually, they actually had Neil Gaiman in The Simpsons. <laughs> nice. I saw that one. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> what was he doing? Um, I believe they were taking the Mickey out of. Is it Tween Books? You know, like Twilight yeah. and that. And it was like a cross between taking a Mickey out of Tween Books and Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> nice. And they had to write this this Tween Book sort of thing. And they nice. got Bart, Homer, um, the science guy, Professor Fink. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hi. Um, oh, I've lost my thread now. Oh, Frank says... Yeah, Professor Frank, cheers. Um, Mo Sislak, um, one of Marge's sisters, I can't remember if it was Thelma or the other one, and uh, Neil Gaiman. <laughs> oh, jeez. <That> sounds <laughs> yeah. awesome. I'll have to check that one out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a really good episode. <laughs> Funny. I remember when uh, Sting was on The Simpsons, and it was right after that little that little girl had fell fall down that hole, and oh, they were oh, and Cinderella and love down the well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he's singing about that, you know, oh, this little kid stuck down a well, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, I love The Simpsons. I don't care what anybody says; it still makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> when they cancel that show, it'll be a sad day. <laughs> I can't believe. Like, I mean, that's that's one of those shows that's been going for so long, and it's you know, started they, Fox. Yeah, I mean, it's just amazing. For the station where TV shows go to die, that's like, yeah, <laughs> it even looks like Neil Gaiman. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> The book job. Oh man! If if uh, if they ever cancel The Simpsons, that's pretty much like the end of my childhood, right there. You know, it's gone. <laughs> yeah. So I think I was. Like, 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 What's that, Connor? They, they, they uh, people say they might like they renewed it all the way up till season twenty-five. They believe that that will be the last season. 24 starts in September, so two years left, most likely, like, maybe. I almost bet, I would almost wonder if they just wait till Family Guy gets cancelled or something, because <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> Family Guy was cancelled for like three oh, years or something, and then they brought it back. Yeah, yeah. and like the, oh, it's like the middle. A couple times. Hmm. <laughs> But does anybody else find it strange that Fox's top TV programs are all cartoons? I know, <laughs> isn't that that's strange? Family eh? Guy, American Dad, um, Simpsons, maybe not Cleveland Show. <laughs> well, they can't even they can't they can't write a real sitcom to save their life. Yeah. <laughs> Mal I mean, their best show ever is like Married with Children and Malcolm in the Middle. Oh, I love Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> Oh, Malcolm in the Middle was awesome. You but, haven't seen, but Malcolm. that's your best show ever. You know, I mean, that's that's. I mean, it was a good show, but <laughs> you haven't seen Malcolm in the Middle until you've seen it dubbed in German. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. That was a oh man, ten times more funnier. <laughs> I have a Red Dwarf uh, episode on the first season, and it's all in Japanese, and it's pretty messed up. <laughs> it's like the first episode, and they did it in, in Japan. Oh, my gosh. I I got about 10 minutes through, and I'm like, i got to turn this off. I'm going to pee myself. <laughs> yeah, it, does look, it is really, really strange when you see... Other shows completely translated into another language in that. 
Yeah. Speaking of Red Dwarf, um, I I didn't know that they tried to redo that. Um, America, they tried to Americanize that, and then I wa- they they put on the first episode of the American one, and it was so horrible that they I can't remember who it was who who broadcast it, but they they said we can't we can't even allow this pilot to go out because it was so bad and it did go out and they were just they were ridiculed they got so many letters that it was like just amazing how much hate mail they got it was so funny yeah but there was no la- there was no laugh track which as you know is like if you have a laugh track it's just easier yeah and Oh, it was horrible. Oh, my God, it was so bad. Well, they actually <laughs> remade it twice. Oh, did they? There's two There's two American pilot episodes. Oh, okay, i only seen the one. Yeah, there was one... In both of them, they both had um, the, the same guy that played Crichton in it. Yeah. But one of them, they made the character of the cat into a female. Oh, wow. Which completely ruined the whole status quo of the whole comedy because the whole idea was that there was these guys and they were the only males in the whole universe that's still alive right and there was no women around yeah yeah and exactly. you know they were trying to you know keep the human race going with just one guy who was actually human right <laughs> and then they make one of the male characters female and it's like <laughs> yeah somebody's gonna have a go at her <laughs> yeah <laughs> Regardless of six nipples, yeah, yeah. Just, might make it easier actually. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just oh my goodness, it was it was a horrible pilot. Horrible pilot. <laughs> yeah. What show was this? Red Dragon. Red Dwarf. Red Dwarf. Red Dwarf. My God, man, you've never heard of Red Dwarf? No. So who hasn't sh- heard of Red Dwarf? I'm gonna shun you like the Amish. Oh, well, I more don't hate know. mail coming your way, Phil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At least it wasn't the emails from the Amish. Super geeks, every- <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with the way I wear my hair? <laughs> uh, these were my these were my grandfather's suspenders. I'll have you know. I said English, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> I watched a great documentary on the Amish, and uh, it was two guys and their families that were gonna. They were questioning, you know, all the stupidity of the teachings. Not, not, you know, not the the good stuff, but just the stuff that they were saying, like. You know, you'll never make it to heaven if you don't have the right color harness on your buggy. Stuff like that, right? <laughs> Which is just ridiculous. And they're like, you know, that's just stupid. And they got, like, shunned from the church and all this stuff. And it was just crazy, man. Just crazy. The right color harness on the buggy. I mean, please. <laughs> I'm pretty sure in, is like in, in the Middle East at that time, there was no such thing as like harnesses on buggies so you know i'm pretty sure that there was no scripture that talked about you know if your buggy harness is not green you will face damnation you know like come on (laughs) well going back to red dwarf it's like um the reason why the cat race got completely wiped out (laughs) because they're they're arguing (laughs) over the fact that one believed that the hats were supposed to be blue and the other ones believed that the hats were supposed to be red Right. <laughs> and they just end up going big <laughs> war over it. <laughs> and I love how they I love how they showed like didn't they show like all these pictures and stuff that were like yeah, was, from these old books and stuff? Yeah. Sort <laughs> yeah. of a tapestry style sort of pictures or book. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough, that's how I see religion now. So it's <laughs> Yeah, well I can understand how <laughs> understand how a lot of people get 
you know, to the place where they don't want to have anything to do with it, unfortunately, just because of how it's been so misrepresented by, you know, people that are supposed to be there to help, you know, people understand mm-hmm. it. That's what's sad. That saddens me more than anything, I think, that fact. That's life, unfortunately. Sure. I remember when we, the the one church I was at, we were there for about 10 years, and I finally, at the end, I had to sit the pastor and his wife and some of the elders down and say, you know, I shouldn't have to do this, but the very fact that I have to sit you people down who are older than me and wiser than me and tell you that you've been stealing money from the church and you're lying to people, if that doesn't tell you something... <laughs> You know, I said I'm basically a scumbag that came in off the street who, you know, was trying to change my life around, and I did that, and everything's better now. But you people have been doing this for a lot more years than me, and and the fact that I have to tell you that this is wrong should tell you that something is wrong. And they're like, then leave. It's just like, oh, man. It's horrible. It's horrible. But it's all good, you know. You got to try to take something good from it, and there was good from it too. But it's just, it's just sad. Yeah, I, I, it's there is definitely something wrong when somebody uses somebody else's faith to manipulate them to do something, like give them money or. Anything like that, like the televangelists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. They'll have their day coming. Well, that's just it. You're right. They will. You know, <clears throat> it's just sad that it it happens so much in you know mainstream churches. But it, uh, I guess, the thing that for me, the thing that really bo- always has bothered me was people taking scripture out of context. You know, like one of the big things in, in everybody, even people who aren't religious know this. One of the biggest ways that people get other people to give them money is to tell them that the Bible says that they have to tithe 10% of everything that they make. And the problem is in the New Testament, it doesn't talk about tithing at all. It was an Old Testament thing, but not new. And it's they still misconstrue the, the scriptures and they still manipulate people and you know demand that they do these kind of things and it's just it's just it's just horrible man it's horrible yeah uh, but but anyways at least we got ice cream <laughs> and sprinkles <laughs> that's right well, well, <laughs> My government ties me like 30%, so it's all right. I'm covered. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's how it works. Oh, I'm stupid. <laughs> you might not get into heaven, but you know the IRS ain't going to be banging on your door. Right, yeah. <laughs> Anytime soon. They'll be, right be- they'll be right beside you where you are. Huh? Actually, <laughs> to be truthfully honest to myself, the IRS did send me a letter this year. <laughs> Oh. I forgot to. Uh, I had to pay them a little bit of money. <laughs> oh, that happens. Yeah. It happens to the best of them. <laughs> you make too much money, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, we're like we're like the rest of us, and you don't have to worry about it. Well, <laughs> I forgot to uh, claim some uh, stuff that I, some bonds that I took out. <laughs> I forgot about it. Oh, then they sent me a letter, and I was like, "Oh, I forgot all about those." Sorry, <laughs> forgot those fifty thousand dollar bonds. Oh. There you go. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways. <sighs> I oh, see, Scott, you got the variant cover of uh, Avengers vs. X-Men. Looks really cool. I love it. Oh, number... Number six. Number six, yeah. 
And uh, the funny thing about that is I'm I'm like extremely colorblind, so I cannot <laughs> I cannot see the difference of two of those covers. I can see the difference for the one that's totally colorized with <coughs> Storm and um, who's the other one on there? Thor. Yeah. The one with Thor. I can see that one okay, but the other one, I can't tell the difference between the two at all hardly. And my wife is like, yeah, they're different. I'm like, no, these are the same. She's like, no, they're different, stupid. I'm like, no, they're the same. And she's like, read right here. I'm with X-Men. I'm with Avengers. I said, oh, okay, yeah, they're different. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't tell color-wise there was any difference. <laughs> she's like, I shouldn't have said nothing. Then you wouldn't have bought it. I suppose, yeah, I'm just looking at the cover now. And the one where Storm's in in the color it does look like Thor's like in sepia yeah that's what I thought it, it's it, just... it yeah it does look like a sort of a slightly mooted cover sort of color wise in any case yeah yeah I just well, I'm really... stick up for you yeah thanks <laughs> they're totally different totally <laughs> I think I'll have to get myself a few um before Watchmen variants <laughs> Yeah, they're awesome. Very, I like that uh, Spectre one. That was Spectre variant you got. Yeah, that's a mm. nice one. Oh, really is that the one with her in the 60s? Yeah. Style car. That looks good. Yeah. The J. Lee ones are really nice too, but I can't afford those. are like 100 bucks a piece, man. It's just too much money. Yeah. How come... Why is his like $200? I mean, They're 1 in 100 variants. They only put out... You know, so many of them. My shop doesn't get them because he doesn't even get a hundred issues, right? So, my shop doesn't even get like any variants, pretty much. Oh, an issue one, nice command issue one as well. Sweet. Yeah, what do you think of that, eh? Nice. I was, uh, I was at that little shop. And I was Oops. Sit- Sitting up on the sitting up on the shelf, and I was like, "Oh, I gotta have that." I already got, I already got a couple of them, but I gotta have it again. So, oh yeah, especially he, getting it at a good price. It was it was like eighteen dollars. Jeez, over here they're like forty pounds, which is like sixty-five dollars. Yeah, huh. and that's like a hundred and twenty-dollar book <clears throat> in mint in mint condition too. So. I think I got and, mine for like ten bucks, but it, I mean, I think it's in fine condition, so that's still pretty. Yeah. And the Amazing Spider-Man three hundred, the first Venom, that was sitting there for ten bucks. I couldn't believe that. Did that person have any idea? <laughs> I know him. Yeah, he's a uh, he's a guy that I met a couple of years ago, and uh, um, he's the guy who sold me almost. 90% of all of my creepy and eerie magazines and heavy metal like he had stock loads of, of magazines and comics and he always cuts me really good deals but I didn't even have to ask for a deal on those it was just like whatever you know cool Sorry. going back on the variants and that and the, and the cost of these variants and that wouldn't it be better if the comic shops actually raffled them out to the customers I tell um, actually Disposable Hero Comics in the UK they do that ones yeah that you, oh wow ones that you've um, if you've got like a semi subscription they randomly upgrade people to the variants oh that's cool that's a good idea yeah there's a there's really rare that there's actually a variant cover that I like but when there is, my shop never gets it, so I'd have to get it like online if I wanted to get it. That's the yeah. frustrating part for me. There's only like five comic book care, or five comic book buyers in my town, apparently, or something. <laughs> my guy's pretty good. He, I, because of how much volume of books that I buy, everything that comes in that's a variant, he gives me the first shot of it at everything. And that's pretty oh, cool. rare. Like you don't nice. get that a lot. So, yeah. I'm I'm just looking on the UK eBay, and they've got the the Jim Lee variant of the Silk Spectre number one. Mm-hmm. 
and they want £150 for it. Oh my god. And it's absolutely crazy. What's that what? work out to be? On it, hang on. Um, it's around about 200 American dollars, I think. Oh my gosh, man. Yeah. That's a lot. And it's just a variant. Like, I mean, it's not... Yeah. It's, it's a nice cover. A, yeah. 233, apparently. Yeah. Oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't pay that for my Amazing Spider-Man 129, the first appearance of Punisher. <laughs> like, yeah. jeez. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, I mean, there's they're going for silly money. I mean, there's a... <laughs> A copy of the comedian, the Jim Lee variant, going for one hundred and twenty-eight pounds, but that's a, an American site. Wow, that's uh, about that's about two hundred dollars. The comedian Jim Lee variant. Do you know what you could buy? What issues you could buy for two hundred dollars? You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, you you could buy the the original Watchmen complete. And in mint condition for two hundred bucks. Yeah. It, you know, or even a hundred. Like I got mine <laughs> for a hundred bucks, all twelve issues, and they're mint. So, gee whiz. Yeah. But you're getting before Watchmen one issue <laughs> for two hundred dollars. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's a, a Jim Lee scribble on it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, I find it hard to like. Buy original artwork for two hundred dollars, let alone one comic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe if it was Bernie Wrightson, I might spend two hundred dollars on a, yeah, you know, original piece of Bernie Wrightson artwork. Oh yeah, sure. But it have to be really good. I want some uh, original Matt Frax Fraction. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're so mean, man. <laughs> Poor Matt. Hey, it's not my fault that he made uh, Fear Itself and the Fantastic <laughs> Five. <laughs> the Phoenix Five. <laughs> uh, I want an original Rob Leefield artwork. <laughs> so I could draw hands and feet on it. Yeah, <laughs> 70 and 72 pouches. Yeah, 72 and a background pouches. as well. I can draw a background in it as well. Yeah, <laughs> and then you can count how many lines are on the face because there's probably at least two hundred. Yeah, <laughs> they all they all look like Clint Eastwood. The faces, <laughs> and they've all got they've all got two big teeth, one at the top and one at the bottom. Yeah, <laughs> they kind of look like that spider with the buck teeth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not buck toothed. I've been drawn by Rob Liefeld. <laughs> Where are my hands and feet? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we don't get hate mail from anything. It's just it's going to be from the Rob Liefeld fans. Sorry, yeah. fan. Fan, yeah. I just like Deadpool. I'm not really a fan of his. <laughs> <laughs> but he has... 35 pouches on him. <laughs> easily, easily 35. <laughs> He's got I'm, much harder uh, pouches, but a bit chink. <laughs> I remember somebody, I bought one comic from somebody on eBay, and I can't remember what issue it was. They sent me a number one issue of something, and it had Layfield's name on it, and I'm like, huh. I start opening it, and it was the first page. I just put it back down. I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm mad that this guy actually sent this to me. <laughs> I want a refund. <laughs> you didn't pay anything for it. I don't care. I still want a refund. <laughs> oh, but man. did you ever read the original Hawk and Dove miniseries that you've done for DC? Yes. And the artwork in there is really good. <laughs> you know. No, seriously, it's really good. I can't I understand know. how somebody could get so bad so quickly. <laughs> is it just lack of caring, or? I mean, I think he was on drugs. <laughs> but when he drove <laughs> up, yeah. And then he come off, and then <laughs> he's like, "What the hell? What happened?" 
<laughs> What's going on? Oh, people don't have hands and feet. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, not when you're on mushrooms. No. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> I'm putting that butt tooth spider up as my thing now. <laughs> <laughs> there, it's got her and buck tooth spider. Ah, it's buck tooth spider. <laughs> buck tooth spider. If he had a little bit of hair sticking straight up, he'd look like alfalfa. <laughs> <laughs> about that picture right there? Bam. Pizza rolls. <laughs> Mom made pizza rolls. <laughs> the guy on the far right, man. Oh my god, looks like somebody's throwing a pizza roll into his mouth. <laughs> I love it. Oh man. Oh. <laughs> I love that that guy plays basketball. I mean, he looks like he should be in the A team. <laughs> he looks, he looks like, like BA. <laughs> He looks like you as a black guy, really. <laughs> I pity the fool. <laughs> that, that beard. I, mean, I pity awesome. the fool, eh? Yeah. yeah. You ain't give me no plane, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we lost Connor. Oh, no. He's gone. <laughs> he might come back in a bit. He yeah, the guy it. on the guy on the right looks like he's getting a peach roll thrown in his mouth, and the guy on the left looks like his fell on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> he's going no, and the other guy's going in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love those kind of pictures. <laughs> You know what would I love be the other one too, the Jimi Hendrix one. Yeah, came for the one they called Justin Bieber. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and he has a he leads <laughs> like Jimi Hendrix dressed up as a, like a a cowboy. <laughs> it looks like one of the the Mexican chicharranos. <laughs> you know what would be funny would be would would be to get a bunch of guys somehow on here and do a video one a video chat. But everybody watch the same B movie and just like cut it up through the whole thing. That would be friggin' hilarious, like a mystery science theater thing. Oh yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. That would be so fun. Yeah. This other that picture I got it says fathers, and it has a picture of a uh, Darth Vader pointing at Leia, and it says some dads are so great they'll blow up your planet just to teach you a valuable life lesson. <laughs> <laughs> I got one with it's got Darth Vader and he's he's on the beach he's in the water and he's filling up a Brita and it said sense and under it says this makes none <laughs> <laughs> every time I see it I just start howling Darth Vader filling up a Brita at the beach <laughs> at the uh -oh. beach yeah <laughs> 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 have to see if I can f I'll see if I can find it. Oh man, it's fun. <laughs> oh. Has anybody seen the 1 in 100 Bradshaw variant of Avengers vs. X-Men, number 6? No. With the Scarlet Witch? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's pretty nice. No, mm. I don't think I have. Is she, is she getting attacked by moths or something? <laughs> I just thought it was... Wasn't it a um, big center up of her? Like, yeah. Season I didn't get good detail on it, I just remember it looked pretty cool. Yeah, because there's, there's a 1 in 100, which is the color version of that, and then there's a 1 in 200, which is the black and white. I hate the black and white variants. 
And I mean, if I'm paying, if I'm paying sixty to a hundred pounds or two hundred dollars for a comic, I at least want the cover to be coloured. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it's funny. I'm looking at it on a uh, my comic shop. It says that the cover price for the one you're talking about that's colored is ninety dollars. Yeah. The, uh, the the var the one in two hundred is a hundred and eighty. It's yeah. like it's twice as much for no color. No color. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's yeah. back. Where Hello, Connor. I messed up with my internet, just shut down. Hey, <coughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Simpsons right there. <laughs> What's that guy's name? Nelson Muntz. Nielsen, right? Nelson. Yeah. Nielsen. <laughs> I didn't mean that, really. I was just saying. Now, Seekiku's going to send me hate mail. Who <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> said, ha hey, hey, I heard you. <coughs> Excuse me. Another shot of that whiskey, brother. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll finished it. I'll still open up another one. I finished it? Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> We didn't hear the thud, though. <laughs> no. I shall go and get another in a moment. Then you'll hear the thud for sure. Yes. <laughs> By Odin's beard. <laughs> By Odin's beard, and then a smash out the window. <laughs> then honky. <laughs> beep. <laughs> they have so many covers for this Adventure Time magazine or comic every single time. It's like four of them. So Adventure, Adventure Time. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> what what is that? I've seen it around. Is it like a cartoon show, is it? Yeah, it is. It's it's people yeah, it's, it's a kids cartoon show on Cartoon Network. Oh, it's not for kids, Connor. <laughs> There's no way. That's for people who used to listen to Pink Floyd and drop acid but don't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, okay, I should watch that then. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Eh? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it is like one of the most bizarre cartoons, man, seriously. I, yeah. Owen, Owen got me hooked on that, and he's like, here, check this out. And I watched an episode, I emailed him back, and I'm like, I don't know what you did to me, but I'm pretty sure you just indoctrinated me into something really bad. <laughs> and then... All I could think, I even had a dream about it. So <laughs> it was, so I knew something was not good. But I can't stop watching it. Like, it's just so messed up. It's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty, it's weirder than, like, Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> and that oh. was a bad cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a good way. But it's like, Ren and Stimpy is, is what they dig out of the bottom of their shoe from Adventure Time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to look into that then. Oh, yeah. You know what? I, I can almost guarantee that you'd like to do, Mark. I could just see you going, oh, this is so awesome! Because <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, you know there's like new one on Monday on Cartoon Network. Ah, cool. Oh, well, nice. I'll, 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 I'll uh, see if I can find any old episodes on that on YouTube or something. I do. I do have a um, a picture um, that I, I'm just going to send down here right now, and that will pretty much sum up what you'll see. If you just look at that picture, you'll be like, "Oh my God, really?" That's what it is. It's just. Oh. oh. <laughs> what the hell? Ah, I'm not seeing it. Oh wow! Oh no! <laughs> I'm not seeing it. Ah. Is that working? Um, I see it. It's pretty. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's not, not come up here. Describe it. Yeah, it's hard to describe for sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like that picture is just so messed up, but it's like that's exactly what the show is. 
Ah, no, it hasn't come up here. Let me let me see if I can send it again. Hang on. It's like, the, you know, the dice you have in Magic: The Gathering <laughs> with all the different yeah. sides on it. They've got like, like legs and arms. I think they just banned it from uh, Dungeon Dragon. Dragon. See it. <laughs> Maybe that'll work. Yep, there it is. Again. <laughs> 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 Ah, here we go. Let's have a look. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> the kid's yeah. name is the kid's name is Finn, and that's the princess with him. And that dog is like this magical, weird dog thing that I'm. I'm pretty sure I saw that once when I sat on Sidbury Hill. <laughs> you taking off, Phil? Yeah, we got some dinner. dinner guests. Dinner guests. <clears throat> dinner guests. Really? Yeah. What are you living in Beverly Hills now? Yeah, we're moving on up. Moving on up. <laughs> <laughs> there, there they are now. <laughs> Dog's gonna eat them. Later, guys. See you, man. See you. See you, man. <laughs> He's having a whole bunch of pack of wild dogs over for supper. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's one thing I've got to ask you to do, Scott. That is your ghost critic impression. <laughs> I was watching the, watching your video you did. Oh, Mark, I, I emailed him before he did it, and I said I was going to do it, and he's like, I don't know if I should be, I don't know if I should be scared about that, or I don't know. And I'm like, no, no, it'll, it'll be cool, man. I said, I'm just going to, it's just it'll be okay. And he's just like, I don't know, I didn't, he was so funny, because he was all anxious and stuff. I'm like, I'm not going to make fun of you, man. I said, I'm just, I'm just going to, you know try to do the accent he's like oh, okay and then he was like oh I laughed so hard it was so funny <laughs> <laughs> trying to think of, I don't know what to say though <clears throat> trying to think of something he it's says it's like um, when you had the tea and it went bloody hell that's hot oh yeah <laughs> English tea English tea yeah um <laughs> Now I'm on the spot and I can't. Yeah. It's Dick Van Dyke all over again. Yeah, right. <laughs> Why? It's Olive and Brave. It's Mary Poppins. <laughs> Been hanging around chimneys again and sticking sticks in it. Yeah. Yeah, get up that chimney now. Right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> trying to find a video of his. <laughs> so, I, so I can mock him. Well, whilst you're doing that, I was just going to say, I'm on the same vein as that um, Adventure Time cartoon, mm -hmm. has anybody seen um, Mary Shelley's Frankenhole? <laughs> no. You haven't seen it? No. Ah, oh, it's brilliant. Is it on YouTube? Um, I think they've got some clips on YouTube, yeah. But I think it's... It's sort of it's a cartoon network, it's like stop motion animation. And they only go on for about 10, 15 minutes each episode. Oh, man. But it's Mary, Stally, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And it's set way, way in the future into like some place like Transylvania. And he gets famous people from history <laughs> visiting him through these what they call Frankenholes, which is like time portals, vortexes. Oh man, that sounds freaking hilarious. Yeah. Um, one of them, they get Gandhi and they turn him into a vampire. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. Uh, um, what was it? The very first episode, um, they have JFK, but it's his vice president, whoever the vice president was at the time, gets his brain transplanted into JFK's body. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, it's absolutely hilarious. I've I've converted so many people here to, oh, yeah, I'm to checking that out. Mary Shelley's Frankenhole. 
I'm writing that down right now. <laughs> so. Let's get Ghost uh, Critics check. Pick of the Week. <laughs> Are you trying to... My picture changed. My thing. My yes, it has. Your dad is Asian? That's, uh, that's Jim Lane. <laughs> I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad is Jim Lane? It was Jim the one with um... <laughs> Is that at the, uh, the last Comic-Con? Yes, it is. That's nice, man. Awesome. I also have one with Peter Mayhew, who's Chewbacca. Oh, and nice. the one I just had before this was me <clears> with um, the actor Steve Carell. Oh, okay. I thought. Oh, yeah, still okay. there, actually, for me. Oh, is it? That was funny because I thought that looked like that, and I thought, man, his dad looks a lot like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like, your dad for Because actually, he, um, he um, lives in my town. Actually, oh, no. Steve Carell does. Up, yeah, he uh, grew up in Marshfield, Massachusetts. Oh, that's cool. Every time you see him, just go. Hoko <laughs> parkour. <laughs> I love that office hop. Yeah, I've sat with him a couple of times. He's um, he's really nice. He um, he like in his like Princeton speech, he was talking about because he um, where I live, there's a general store down the street. Just just has like food and like little snacks and candy and stuff like that. And uh, he bought it like two years ago, and he talks about it on like the news and all the talk shows he's on and stuff like that. So that's where he goes all the time. And we see oh, him nice. hanging out in a little store eating candy and drinking pop. <laughs> I think I can beat you all because um, my dad Did was you? Stan Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to be mean and say my mom is Kate Bush and I was going to be on the next flight over, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seriously, I've got a picture of my dad and he looks so much like Stan Lee. It's incredible. Oh, no. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'll see if I can get a picture and put it up on air. It's not going to do much good for people who are actually listening to this podcast, but it'd be funny for us. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the new ongoing joke. Did you guys know... That Mark's dad was Stan Lee? Yep. <laughs> During the summer of love <laughs> at Woodstock. <Yeah. laughs> when he was a GI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, nope. Nope. Somehow I'm making a video of it, not a picture. Hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> ah. I'll, I'll switch it to photo rather than video. That might work. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, bit of a dark go. picture. Connors has changed to uh, Jim Lee now for me. Yeah, that's a good picture. See, there's me and Peter Mayhew, who's Chewbacca, in all like the original Star Wars films. <laughs> else Jay's picture is all the sounds that you hear when he falls down the stairs <laughs> <laughs> okay let's see if I can do this without cutting out <laughs> <laughs> So just talk amongst yourselves while I'm doing this. <laughs> All right. Are you still trying to find some uh, Astro City, Scott? Yeah, I only have two issues. I've read them like ten times each. <laughs> do you know which ones do you have? I've got number two, <laughs> and I've got number thirteen. It's my pick of the week. <laughs> I don't know if I like it. 
<laughs> That's all you get. <laughs> I'm gonna get hate mail from uh, Mark now. You're making <laughs> fun of me again, aren't you? I heard you. No, I wasn't. I'm gonna keep an eye okay. on you, Bay, because there's quite a few on there. <clears throat> Whoa! I there it is. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Wait, oh what? my God, man! My dad is Stan Lee. <laughs> <laughs> or was, I say. Thumbs up! Oh my God! He does look like him. It's cool. You need to, you need to like show that to everybody and just <laughs> say. This, this is who I really am. My last name is Lee. <laughs> Williams is my middle name. I'm Mark Williams Lee. <laughs> oh, man. Spooky, isn't it? <laughs> wow. He does really look like him, though, man, from, like, the 70s. Like, holy mackerel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So there you go. Claim to fame. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder if I can get some alimony off him. Yeah. <laughs> He'll give you free uh, Avengers vs. X Men comics. <laughs> <laughs> What's that one that you got up, Connor? Who's all in that one? What? Oh, that's just me and my friend did the um, Midnight for uh, the Avengers. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to keep that one. Because the most recent one I have, all the other ones are like with people are always like old ones. Yeah. <sighs> Has any, anybody heard that they're supposed to be having midnight sales for Walking Dead number 100? No. I didn't hear yes. that. No. Yeah. Yes, no. Sorry, I was kind of listening, but I kind of wasn't. <laughs> so is it yes or no? <laughs> so, so like on you mean like on a on a Tuesday night? Yeah, mm. you know, like they did with the DC Fifty Two. They had no. mid some some. All oh right, it was the, when DC relaunched their comics in se September last year, some comic shops had midnight openings. Oh yeah, that's right. To, I remember that. to sell the comics and that to people, and it looks like they, I don't know whether it's official or whether they're just talking about doing it at the moment. But it looks like there's going to be some comic shops that are actually going to be opening for midnight on Tuesday, so they can sell what uh, Walking Dead number one hundred. Wow, wow. that's crazy. I know <laughs> my my place won't do it just because he's he, he he can barely drag his arse in there for like eleven in the afternoon, so. <laughs> he likes sleeping. Yeah, exactly. Uh. Same with my store. My store stinks. It's like the guy, like, it, like, the store will be open maybe like eight in the morning to maybe like seven at night, and he's there maybe noon and leaves at like five. And he's he owns it, and sometimes it's like he has his friend works there, but they ne never show up when they're supposed to ever, or it just it's. Terrible. I hate stores it's like that. Whenever I want to, yeah. I Those just, are the kind uh, of I stores just... that I kick the windows in when I leave. <laughs> <laughs> and Nick Webb scaled off. I was down south all week. I was in uh, South Carolina, and we went, I went to a few comic shops around there, and they were great, fantastic, great selection. Everybody's really nice. It was. Ten times better than all the ones here. I wish I had shop. It's like always where you like or <clears throat> know like locally close to or where the best shops are. Yeah. Uh. I got off lucky because mine in town here is great, but like I can travel in any direction and hit like probably five or six. So, you know, whether they're antique stores or flea markets or comic stores and. We have them all over the place here, so I got off lucky for that, anyways. Yeah, that, that's good. That's what's good about here. There's a lot of flea markets, too. There's a big one, like, north of where I live, 
It's about like an hour drive. They have it every Sunday. It's huge in Italy. It's like the biggest on like the South Shore, and it um it every single week it guarantees that there's a guy with like tons and tons of comics. So I go all the time, and he has great books. He doesn't even know what he's selling, but awesome. We had one around here that had the I I can't go there anymore. I got into it with a guy who was dressed like a duck and uh, <laughs> he uh, he I thought he had like swore at my wife, so I threw my pop at him and uh, hit him in the head. You know, <laughs> so I wasn't allowed to go back. But this <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That orange crush is sticky. <laughs> Not as sticky as your blood will be when I rip your fur out. Fur? Fur? No, feathers. Well, I... <clears throat> Oh, congratulations! <laughs> uh, we got um, boot sales over here. What's that? Uh, we we have boot sales over here. Do you have that in America or Canada? Boot trunk. Boot boot sales. Yeah, well, the, the big field with people with all their cars in there. And they open their boot of their car and they have stuff that they don't want to sell. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I thought you meant like boots, yeah. like sh shoes and boots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, uh, no, Boston we don't have that. No. Well, uh, oh. I suppose it's a bit like sort of flea markets in America. <laughs> and that sounds cool. Yeah. Um, and I used to go, there's, there's one quite local to me. I used to go there near enough every week to see if people were selling comics. Yeah. Um, but after you have mo you had movies like X Men, Spider Man, and yeah, you know, all the the really once comic books started getting into the the media pretty well, people caught on don that comics were worth something or possibly could be worth something. So when normally you'd go up there and you'd get a bundle of ten, twenty, thirty comics for five pounds or so, you're getting people selling you rubbish comics for like five pounds for one comic yeah right right and it wasn't you know it's like i don't know action comics number six <laughs> five two or something like that something that had no nothing at all to do with it but they were charging you like 10 pounds for a comic yeah we still get that here when you go to the places like there's there's always the antique stores that you know, they think that every single comic that they have is worth about twenty bucks, and yeah, yeah, you know, they're worth like a nickel, maybe, <laughs> maybe. <clears throat> but um, that I don't know. I've had conversations with people that are selling books that are like that, and it's like, you know, these are maybe, maybe worth like a buck for all of them, and they're like, you have no idea what you're talking about. It's like, actually, mm -hmm. I, I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a pretty good I, idea. Um, continue. What? Go ahead. I Mike. was uh, I was um, on uh, it was um, I was on the uh, Craigslist, and there was this guy who um, uh, who was selling a bundle of comics, and he didn't know what they were worth at all. And there were just some old uh, books from like the '80s and such, and he was selling them for like there was like only like 12 books there, and he was selling them for like 200. So we didn't really know what they were worth, like the whole thing of them. And what I saw hidden in there was Silver Surfer issue four from like the first series, uh, like the one where um, it's him and Thor on the cover with like Thor and his hammer about to whack him. Oh <laughs> yeah. Coming straight at him. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, like, like this guy doesn't know what he's like selling, so I can easily get this for like a price. I don't know. He doesn't like really know like how to like describe the condition. He said it's a good. Like, he said it like it looks. It looks good, and he's um. He offered me eighty dollars for it, for something that like in the condition that he described it as. I don't really think it would be as good as he said it was. Could be worth like a little like 
a little like under like 200, a little like mid 100, kind of like something like that. So I'm getting like kind of a good deal on it, but I'm not sure if I should really like trust what is like judgment on it or if it's just like going to be in terrible condition when I actually get it. Yeah, that's the thing about Craigslist is you really never know until you get there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you also the guy never lives know if in the next state over. Yeah, yeah. That's a long way to go, yeah. and you never know if you're going to get tied up and, like, cut up and eaten. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. that happens, I guess. But Did anybody yeah, see the... Oh, sorry, Connor. Oh, no, no, continue, it's fine. Okay, all right. Um, I was just going to say, has anybody seen the, the, the sort of TV series Comic Book Men? Yes. With yes. Kevin Smith in his shop and that. Did you see yeah. the episode with the woman who had um, a box of old comics that her grandfather or father collected? And he gave it to her and said, if you ever need money, sell these. Oh, yeah. And she had, and it was like, like, stupid old books in there. Yeah, it was like... Amazing Spider-Man number one, two, three, four, five, and Fantastic Four. The first five issues of Fantastic Four, and, and Uncanny X-Men. Yeah. And yeah. she said her neighbor offered her something ridiculous, like about fifteen hundred dollars for it, and it was actually all worth about ten times that much. Yeah. And Is that the that's one where they also found like the first appearance of Wonder Woman in that box? Was that that one? No, that was, was a different. That the that was a different one. I think. I think that was a different episode. Because all the, all the comics that she had in this box was uh, all Marvel comics and that. <clears throat> yeah, and they weren't in. No, uh, no, they weren't in near mint condition. But even in the condition they were in, they were still worth. You know, it's like about five hundred dollars each, sort of thing. That's what I'm hoping to stumble on sometime. <laughs> oh. It's just a big box of comics that somebody says, give me 50 bucks, and I take them home, and lo and behold, there they there they are, Spider-Man 1 to 10, <laughs> Avengers 1 to 10, X-Men 1 to 10, 1 to 10 of everything. Uh, it's like um, Howler Mouse's Hall. Yeah. That's like, ah. Oh. Here, have some that, comics. That, that. <laughs> That just happens in those southern states, I swear. You know, everybody's, you know, <laughs> yeah. everybody's just like lounging around, having some barbecue and eating or drinking some iced tea, and it's like have some have some comics, and you go through, and it's like, well, I'll be a a, a, a Jiminy Cricket, you know, like, <laughs> like what's in here? <laughs> X Men number one. There's like 16, 16 copies of it, and oh, jeez. <laughs> Uncanny X Men number one eight one. Oh man, some such. I think the, the closest I ever had to that was, um, I just moved into the flat I'm in now, and there was something wrong, wrong with the, the tap in the kitchen, so I phoned in somebody to come in and fix it, and the guy who came in to fix it saw I had all my comics around me, and he goes, "Oh, do you like comics?" I went, "Yeah," and he goes, "Oh, um." I've got a load of comics in my garage. They're doing nothing. You can have them for twenty pounds. Yeah, okay, no worries. He toodled off. Come back again. I gave him the twenty pounds. I opened up the box. And it was like all Frank Miller Daredevils. Oh wow, nice. It was That's like, a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> there, there wasn't anything like the Death of Electra. I mean, I, I picked that up in any case, or anything like that, or the first Bullseye. But there was some you know, definite. I think I've had. I think I got the first Mephisto. I think, which was Frank Miller. Oh, nice! I think it was alright, and uh, yeah. So uh, there was there were some clunkers in there, like the New Adventures of Indiana Jones, and <laughs> and a a beat up copy of Action Comics. It was the first first appearance of Superman's car. Oh wow! You know the one with the fists? Yeah. On the front. I remember that. Yeah, it was like a spaceshipy kind of thing looking. Yeah. Had the fin and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Cool. Why Superman would want a spaceship with fists on? I don't know, but because <laughs> <laughs> Corgi probably owned the rights to it and made a freaking model <laughs> out of it. <laughs> well, yeah, but um, wow. yeah, I mean that's the closest I've come to something like that. But um, all the really key books that I got 
when I first collected as a kid, I, I stole. So I never, I never really bought any of them. Oh, I was, I was a horrible freaking kid, man. I stole everything. So smashing windows of comic books and running off of them. No, we we actually <laughs> got to be friends with a comic book shop owner in town, and he oh, said, "I have a whole box of old bags in the back. You guys can have." So we went in the back and. I probably stole about 60 really old X-Men comics. We put them in the bottom of the box with all the bags on top. And so. <laughs> I still feel bad about that to this day, but I think he's dead now, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. So it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But now I make sure I pay, I pay for all my comics. <laughs> I learned my lesson. Anybody else got any sins they want to confess? Or <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been collecting long enough yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we've been going two hours and fifteen minutes now. Jeez. Wow. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, next week we'll be back to the usual time. If that's okay with everyone. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, sure, good. Was that half past six? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool past yeah. uh, one for you guys. Yep, that sounds good to me. Sweet. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've given up um, climbing mountains and worrying goats, so. <laughs> <laughs> I can be there for next week. Hope, yeah. Hopefully, we can get um, <laughs> Tim's goat to climb up to the top of the uh, hill. Yeah. And he can be on as well. Yeah, I had this mental mental picture of Mark sitting on a goat, eating a chocolate bar, <laughs> coming down like the mountain, and like yodeling. <laughs> I'm drinking Swiss Miss. <laughs> sitting cross-legged on a goat. Yeah. <laughs> I picked I up some from that goat. My butt's so itchy. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can never go back to Switzerland again. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, this has been really fun. And um, <laughs> we'll talk to you next week. Yes. Thank yeah. you, everyone, for listening. Cool. And everyone for joining in. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So to recap, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, jeez. Sweet. Oh, right. well, that was that was good. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm gonna take off. Okay. So uh, I will. Um, I will probably speak to you guys next week, anyways, or if not uh, before then. Mm -hmm. through some through some videos or comments or whatever anyway all right yeah sweet cool all right it, guys. it was good talking to you guys again we'll talk to you guys later you definitely take, take it easy Bye. Cheers, guys. <laughs> See you later. See you. pick of the week <laughs> <laughs>